Ahoy folks, I'm back working on another Wazer project. This one I'm affectionately calling Wazer Laser because I'll be integrating one of my other machines in my shop into the process to make some cool glass jewelry. If you're new here, this is my year-long journey into using the Wazer water jet to expand my glass art business in production and new directions. I've been speaking more generally about the use of the Wazer lately, so for this video I'm going to focus on a specific project. As always, we start with a design. I sketched up a couple of little single piece Monstera leaves until I had one that I liked and would continue to like at a reduced size. As is always my practice working with the Wazer, I love to use it best on things that would be an absolute nightmare to do by hand, and this is a great example. Now that I have a couple of options drawn up, I'll take them to my computer and open them in my vector program, Inkscape, use the trace bitmap function to quickly grab the lines, check out the overall shape for any weird gaps or extra nodes, and then it's ready to test in the Wazer Wham software. I'll open it there and then resize it to something nice and tiny since we're looking for jewelry here. And now we're going to take it over to the Wazer to test it. I'm first trying an inside line cut to see how big that leaves the gaps between my leafy parts. And I just picked a piece of green glass I had hanging around to use up since we're in trial mode here. We'll screw it into place and let the Wazer go. I don't usually stand here watching the cut, but since it was only two minutes, I did. And it's actually pretty satisfying. And now I have a tiny leaf. It's super teeny and cute, but there's some changes I want to make. First of all, at this scale, I don't want to be drilling any holes in this piece myself, so I'll add a little circle design into the mix so the Wazer can do that for me. I'll also try to use the center line cut option to reduce the gaps between the leaves. And now we try again. I like the gaps better, but my circle hole is ugly and probably not super stable. So finally, we move on to trying the outside cut type. I originally didn't choose this one because it looked like the lines would overlap each other, but since there will always be a little bit of space for the cut itself, this might be the perfect size gap I'm looking for. So on to round three. These cuts are exactly what I wanted at this scale. The hole is still a little weird though, and I think I want to move it, so we'll do that. Also, I'm doing a test here to see how delicate the glass is with the hole in it, and since we got a break when I was goofing around, I'll need to solve for that too later. I'm going to cheat the system by manipulating the Wazer to slowly pierce the glass instead of cut a tiny hole. This way it'll be one circular shot from the jet of water instead of having a cut in point beside the hole. I'm doing this by leaving just a couple of extra nodes in my design. I learned this technique by doing it accidentally in the past. <laughs> you can see it shows up as a little green spot in Wham next to the orange lines. Since I'm now running out of space on my piece of scrap glass, I'm going to use a handy function on the Wazer to gauge where to place my material. This cut extents function is found on the control panel right before you start cutting, and it basically draws an outline of the space I'll need so I can screw my small amount of material into the right spot. These holes still look a little weird, so I'll adjust my extra pierce nodes down to just two close to each other and then try one more time. And now we're looking pretty good. I think it's time to up the game and use this concept on some fancy glass. This glass is called dichroic due to its ability to reflect and refract different colors from different angles, and so far I've never put it into the Wazer because it's really easy to scratch the fancy coating, and the Wazer is in there throwing grit around everywhere, but it's time to test it out. I have a scrap piece here, and I'll use the extents function again to position it properly, and go. It looks awesome. I thought right before I dropped the piece on the ground and shattered it. Uh, it's a waste, but I at least know the Wazer and this glass are compatible. I'm going to put a bigger piece of dichroic in soon, but this seemed like a good opportunity to change up the cut bed on the Wazer, since I'm sure you could tell it's been a little bit abused. I don't know if this is the way everyone does it, but I use both sides of my cut beds, so I just haul it out, remove the brackets, reverse them, and then put it back in. And now I have a nice, clean new surface to work with. I set up a cut file for the Wazer with 10 of these little leaves, and I'll let it rip on the big chunk of dichroic, and fingers crossed it works out. Which it did not. Uh, well, it kind of did. I think it's I screwed the glass on too tightly to the cut bed, and left it under a bit of stress because I had some movement on the glass sheet, with, which left me with some weird cuts. But I did get 8 nice leaves out of the deal, so I'll move on with those. I said I would be using my laser for this project, and here's how. The dichroic glass I used has this coating to provide the rainbow effect, but underneath that it's all black glass, so any design I laser off the glass will appear in a dark line detail, which is exactly what I want. I'll design that on my iPad as well, load it over to the laser, position these guys, and etch them up. And then of course, you remember how I was able to break the glass earlier by accident. 
dropping it on my workbench. I'm going to just put these guys in the kiln overnight and run them through an anneal uh, cycle to strengthen the glass. This ensures that my intricate cuts at this size are nice and solid for jewelry. And now I have a final product. I'll use this one piece that got a weird misalignment on the laser to see how strong they are, and they're totally fine. Now just a little piece of solder work with, don't worry, lead-free silver solder to add some rings to these guys, some sterling silver chain and earring pieces, and I have the first ever sand and fireworks dichroic jewelry. I'm so, so excited to branch my business out into an entirely new product line, especially one that's this cute and shiny. Thank you so much for working through this project with me. I'm going to go do it all over again to make more of these guys, and I'll see you in the next step of my laser journey.